All right, so it's been a little while since I posted, and I've really been working on trying to get some good smoke effects, and I had something particular in mind, and it took me a little bit of trial and error to figure out exactly what to do and how to get to what I wanted. So this is what I ended up with. Not 100% happy with it, but at some point I had to kind of stop <clears throat> and kind of go over what I've been looking at and trying to do. And I have some ideas of how to improve it, but I'll kind of go over um, how I got this effect and kind of the process that I went through because as I've said before this channel is all about learning it's not just about <clears throat> um, following some step-by-step -step, uh, to get an effect but it's to learn and figure out how it is that you can um, figure out how to make your own effects so this is what I ended up with so I'll kind of go through some of the process that I went through so I'm gonna hide this and I spent quite a bit of time working on an effect like this and you'll notice it starts out really wide and kind of drapes down and what this is doing and I won't go over it in detail because there's quite a bit there but essentially what it's doing is it is using a trail or a particle strip in order to get this effect. So the particle you can't really even see, it's just not even <clears throat> rendered, but I'm using the smoke um, image as my particle strip item. And as you can see, it kind of stretches as it goes down. I don't like how it stops. Um, you know, smoke doesn't just all of a sudden stop and dissipate. And that was the effect I was at. And I also couldn't figure out a good way of, of handling the width of my strip. So when I started out thin and got fatter, it didn't, it didn't get a good effect. And I played around with a lot of things and just couldn't come up with something that could look good. I do, I do like the effect of using that smoke strip and how it stretches. The other problem is, is here it's all squished together because it's going to stretch and the longer the strip gets, the more it stretches, which I also don't like. But it gave me some ideas for doing some other cool smoke effects. So um, anything that you do, even if it doesn't turn out and you're not exactly happy with it, um, you're still learning a lot and you can use some of those other ideas and things that you've learned um, in maybe some other effects. So we'll hide this and I always keep all these and you can see I have this long list of effects that I've been working on. Some I've, I've been showing on these videos, some I've just um, done as tests for myself. But the first thing that we have to do is um, in order to get a good fade in and fade out and get those edges kind of moving on my smoke effect, you need a good shader. And I've gone over this similar shader before. Um, I won't go over it a lot in details, but I'll kind of go over what this, this kind of effect basically looks like. And in the end, I played around with either having the edges be on top and bottom. And as you can see, in this case, the um, kind of edges that are fading in and out are going to be on the top and bottom of my of my image or I did another variation which had it up and down and this is the one I ended up using because the orientation generally is up and down of my smoke and it's falling kind of from top to bottom so I wanted the edges of my smoke to be um, vertical that way and I'll kind of go over quickly um, the basics of this and I've gone over something very similar in one of my other shader videos but essentially what I'm doing is it's going to use it's going to use a basic um, time to feed in and I have this time offset to give some randomness 
Um, and you'll see how that's exposed later. And I use the tiling and offset um, node here along with my UV node and I'm using the red. And so the red gives me the vertical um, offset the way I want. If you use some of the other colors like blue, you can get the, the horizontal, but I'm using the red in order to get my vertical offset. So you can see here's my noise, simple noise pattern and I'm subtracting off um, <clears throat> that UV component in order to get this black ragged edge. And then I'm taking the negate of that basically. Um, this one minus gives me, see the, the black edges on the right here. And so then I feed my simple noise in and I'm adding those two together and then I'm subtracting off of that to get the black on the right edge. And then essentially they're just combined together here so that the brightness is in the middle. And then I am going to be subtracting off some amount and that amount's going to be controlled by my um, effect. So I have this dissolve power, how much is just a fixed item and then dissolve speed. You can see that I will vary over the lifetime of the particle so that the longer the particle lives, I can control how fast it fades um, to black. And as it fades, it's going to really um, have most of it is going to be in the middle because the middle is the brightest. So that's the middle part of it should be mostly what is appeared last. So it should fade kind of from the edges toward the middle is the idea. This is just a sample um, PNG that is used as a default, but I feed the main texture in here that of course <clears throat> our end result is multiplied. And of course, wherever it's one, it's going to be one. Wherever it's zero, it's going to be red or black. And then everything in between um, gives that shades of gray, which of course we feed into our alpha, which means that the lighter gray it is, the more transparent it is. So it's pretty, pretty common effect. And again, I've gone over the details of this before, but it is important that you have something that you can control um, your particle fade from your VXS in order to get your effect that you're looking for. The next thing you need is a good PNG of smoke. And this is the one I started with. Um, and I ran into some issues. You'll notice that the bottom here is flat and the, the smoke goes all the way to the edge. And what ends up happening is, remember when you're um, rendering your PNGs, everything is a square. And so you don't want to see a flat edge on your smoke. And when the smoke goes all the way to the edge like this, you get to see a flat edge no matter what you do. Because um, remember, my fade is vertical, so the bottom can be solid, and then you see this solid edge. So what I did is I just used our little eraser tool inside GIMP, and I removed most of what was on that bottom edge to make it a bit more faded. And so we really have not, none of the smoke really um, hits the edge in any solid way. You have a little bit here, but like I said, um, my shader is removing um, these edges, these vertical edges, so you really don't see that but I did see it on the bottom. So this is one smoke item. Really what you should do and what I would like to do is to use multiple um, multiple images and kind of randomly rotate through them instead of using the same image every time. But like I said, I wanted to stop you know, messing around with what I was doing, but I did play around with some With some items here, <clears throat> you'll see I uh, started playing around with some of those image generators with cigarette smoke. I like this smoke kind of here. 
So what I'll do is I'll grab this image and just cut out the parts I want. Maybe rotate it vertical, but this I think would make a good, good kind of ribbon of smoke um, as an option. And I grabbed some other ones. Here's another different cigarette smoke. This this kind of curly stuff here looks nice too. Um, the last one I grabbed wasn't so great. I mean, it's okay. <clears throat> the problem is, is it's not against a black background. It's a pretty bright um, <clears throat> versus, uh, I, I found that having some more black in there and a ribbon of white tends to, tends to look better. So, um, play around with it. You know, you can type in lots of different keywords to get some different smoke effects, but Getting a good smoke PNG is very, I think is very important just from what I've seen playing around with um, some of the different looks. All right, so I am going to drag this guy back here. And let's take a look at the VFX graph that I used in order to create this guy. So it's pretty basic. It's really not that complicated, but there are some key points here that I wanna go over um, in order to achieve the effect. So <clears throat> it's gonna be a basic, just a basic spawn. I didn't put a variable rate on it. The rate doesn't have a lot of effect on it, so I didn't externalize that, it's just hard-coded. Um, I've learned just to make a really high capacity because as I'm playing around with things, especially with those strips, you can get a lot of particles. So I always set that really high. I found that um, having a fixed lifetime was better. I use six here, but that really depends on how fast the particles fall. And in order to get a good kind of floating down particles, what I ended up using is a, uh, where'd he go? Oops, drag that down there. It's really in the update particle, I used some gravity. So gravity's nice because if you think the smoke's starting at the top, just kind of floating down. And I did externalize the amount of gravity in the Y direction, um, cause that's the only gravity really uh, that it affects. So I could play around with how fast I wanted those floating down to get the look I wanted. So I externalized that as a variable. I set the velocity um, kind of left and right. So there's a randomness to the velocity. It's either going to be, and again, I externalized it to give some movement out from the particles as they were created versus just kind of dropping down. And that I found gave a, a little nicer look to smoke kind of kind of going out from our archway. And then the position, <coughs> start position is a torus. So I want the smoke kind of appearing all throughout our, our archway and versus just floating down because when I just had them floating down, and I do have a collision item, which I'll show in a minute, but um, it ended up being a really hard edge, and I didn't want a hard edge. You want kind of a, a rough, soft edge to your smoke coming down through your archway. So I'm going to just anchor that guy over there so we can kind of see our... I know we're gonna have to turn this guy back on. Turn our arch back on. All right. So if we select that and we select our torus, so this is where they're going to be created. And it doesn't go all the way to the bottom because any ones that are made on here do float down perfectly fine and that looks good. The ones up here, You'll notice that 
um, this was kind of a dilemma that I had was that you'll notice they kind of start up here and then they float straight down and they hit our collision our collision cone which I'll show in a minute but and I don't really like that I mean it doesn't look it looks okay and if I made this thinner then I would get no smoke up here and if I made my cone bigger I wouldn't get any smoke down here so um, you know Sometimes when you look at these things too close, if this is part of a game or something, it's not like someone's going to be examining it. And But I couldn't come up with a, a great way. And that's another reason why I adjusted that velocity left and right to get them kind of moving instead of just straight down, kind of moving left and right. Um, so it didn't look just like they were falling down and running into something, which is actually what they're doing. All right, so... Let's move this guy up. So in order for them not just to um, float down in front of our archway, I have to have something blocking them, and that's this collide with cone. <clears throat> I'm going to do a zoom out, and I'm going to move it left and right. So there's a cone, a collision cone, that you can use in your update. So you can collide with a sphere, a cone, a plane, and actually I also use a plane here that I'll show in a minute. And in this case, there's the cone, and the cone is really filling the middle of my arch. And I kind of, I played around with, um, see if we slope this down a bit, they'll actually kind of move forward And now they, they kind of float down in front of the archway. So you can play around with the shape of this to get exactly the look you want. Um, there's lots of options there. Maybe if I made this taller, it wouldn't float down so much. Depends on, you'll notice that even though we're looking straight on, <clears throat> they're actually appearing somewhat in this z direction they're not all in a flat plane um so that the slope of this cone does affect that so again you can play around with that um that option in order to get kind of a different look and um i spent way too much time playing around with things like that so we have the collision with the cone we have our gravity i also had it colliding with a plane here and that was so they my idea was is that they would come down and then they would kind of flow out away along kind of the floor of whatever scene that you had the issue is is that when it hits the plane they kind of stop abruptly and they don't flow out um, I played around with a bunch of things of making kind of a sloping cone and it just, it just never looked natural. Because if you actually have smoke, it should slow down right as it approaches that plane. And you could through code, and that's probably what you need to do, is have them slow down and affect their velocity through code um, before it hits that. And then you'd have to give them some velocity out to make them kind of move along the floor. The other issue is, is that, remember, these are, these are flat images and so as soon as they float out they're going to be still standing up which would look odd also so you'd have to play around with the angle and i just don't know if that would look good um i'm sure you could do it it may be um quite more complicated but i was pretty happy with you know overall the effect <laughs> i did add a bit of turbulence here um turbulence is <laughs> It can give a bit more randomness to the movement. Um, you know, if, if you play around with the intensity, it's, it doesn't have to be very intense in order to get kind of, kind of out of hand. You'll notice that, and for some reason, every time I turned up the turbulence, it moved um, in the, the left X direction a lot more than the right, which don't know how turbulence actually works. I, again, played around with a little bit 
Um, the point one seemed to give me a little bit better, better movement. I didn't really notice a big difference. <clears throat> so this is a, one of the key things in order to get this to look good is to control this dissolve speed and dissolve power. So the dissolve power I have fixed. So if I crank that up, you'll notice it gets a lot dimmer because again, it subtracts off a lot more just right off the bat. If I make it too low at zero, you'll notice it's way too bright. So um, picking a good value for that, you know, and being able to play around with that inside of your VFX seemed to work to get the right amount of brightness. Obviously the color and brightness of that, it's at a 2.7, so making it, making it brighter um, also has an effect, you know, how bright you want it. So you can play around with that value. Of course, I'm using a single, that single smoke texture here. Um, and then the time offset. So in order to affect that, um, the time is fed in as a seed for the, uh, for your noise and I didn't want all of them with the exact same noise pattern so and I've showed this before I have this custom um, particle basically a custom property which I set when the particle is created as a random number and I feed that into the time offset uh, ribbon width I had been using before not using it anymore so then the set size over life so I start out bigger. At first I was starting out smaller, but then it didn't look natural, them kind of growing. I do want them to get a little bit bigger as I go on. So of course this graph um, controls their size. So they start out at 0.3 and they get up a little less than 0.5. So not that big, but, and of course, again, you can spend a lot of time playing around with, you know, uh, how big you want them in the end to get that look that you want. Um, I also multiply um, that by two to make them a little bit bigger. And this was another key one, this dissolves speed. So remember, this is controlling uh, how much we subtract off that noise pattern. And this is what I end up finding is that I kept the particles bigger at the beginning but in the beginning, they're virtually invisible. They're invisible and then over the lifetime, remember the lifetime goes from zero to one because that's what I'm feeding in for my value. So at time zero, they're at one. So they're almost invisible. Then they become more and more visible as it goes on. And then as they reach the end of their lifetime, they go back to invisible again. So this seemed to get the best look. And now if we, if we look at this again, we can kind of see how they kind of fade into existence. See, they, the other thing is, is that, again, they're being created on screen. And you can kind of see them pop into existence. You really wanted that. I really wanted them to fade in as they kind of came down. And I could probably even move that over a bit more and make them a bit more invisible for longer. So let's just try that. So if, uh, zero, let's make it this and let's keep it invisible a little longer. So now you'll notice that you can't even see them and you see them fall down less at the top. They're more being created and then moving out. So I think I like that a little better. Yeah, they, they more fade into existence a little bit better here um, that way. All right. So I was, in the end, pretty happy with this. Again, I spend way too much time messing around with all those little details to get just kind of the look you want. I like how they 
I like how they fade out. I can tell that they're all the same image. That's why I wanted to play around with um, maybe trying some other images, um, mixing up some of the different smoke images. There's a couple different ways of doing that. So maybe I'll maybe I'll do that. And if I find something that looks a lot better, I'll kind of post and an update to this one. But overall, um, it's looking pretty good for my first try. I do have some other other things I would like to play around with, kind of smoke snaking or along the ground, um, maybe on the floor to uh, you know in in a scene for a game. I think would look look cool and some of the stuff that I learned about about the trails and using those particle strips I think I'm going to use and I like some of those smoke effects that I found so I'll play around with those too and, and maybe have a, a video going over going over what came out of that so thanks for watching thanks for um, watching these videos and I hope you're learning something again the key is to learn um, as much as seeing some cool effects um, and using what you've learned here to make your own effects. So uh, keep watching and I hopefully will post something soon, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe in a week or two. All right, again, thanks for watching.